So Elon Musk has a trans child. In a recent interview with Jordan Peterson, he was talking about his trans kid and said that he lost his son, his son is dead, and that the woke mind virus is responsible. And now Elon Musk again is being called a transphobe. Let's talk about it. Yeah, you better. Yeah, you better. Guys, before we get into today's video, please like and subscribe. We are gonna be talking about Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a very busy man. He's got a lot going on with Tesla and X and his missions to Mars that he wants to accomplish, plus repopulating the Earth, I guess. And in his mission to repopulate the Earth, Elon Musk has had 12 children. Now, one of those 12 children happens to be trans and is going through this transitional period in life, separating themselves from Elon Musk. And Elon spoke about that in a recent interview with Jordan Peterson where he basically said, I've lost my son, my son is dead. And of course the internet did not wanna hear any of this. They're going crazy on him. They're calling him a transphobe. So I think today we'll watch the clip and respond, see what we find. It happened to one of my, my older boys um, uh, where I was, I was essentially tricked into uh, signing documents uh, for one of my older boys, Xavier, uh, this is before I had really any understanding of what was going on and the, we had COVID going on and so uh, there was a lot of confusion um, and um, you know I was told oh he, you know Xavier might commit suicide if, if he that was a that was a lie right from the outset incredibly evil and I agree with you that people that have been promoting this should go to prison That's so I was I was action. tricked into doing this um, and uh, you know it wasn't explained to me that puberty blockers are actually just sterilization drugs. Um, so, um, anyway, uh, and so I lost my son, essentially. Uh, so, you know, they, uh, they call it dead naming for a reason. Yeah, I, All right, I'm, so they, the reason it's called dead naming is because uh, your son is dead. So my son Xavier is dead, He's killed by the woke mind virus. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I can't imagine what that would be like. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and there's lots of people in that situation now. Right. It's not pretty. And lots of demolished kids. Yes. So, yeah, well, that's a, good, that's a good reason to be the final straw. All right, so let's. So I vowed to destroy the, mind, the woke mind virus after that. And we're making some progress. Join the club. Yeah. Okay, so despite a few minor interruptions, this is a very powerful clip uh, with Elon Musk talking about his son, and there is so much to be gleaned from it. And I think one thing that is right is I couldn't possibly imagine what it's like to go through something like this with a child who you once knew in one way and is now taking on a totally different form. And I think Elon Musk is very much onto something when he says that reference, dead naming, is really insinuating that my son has died. Now, a lot of people have been upset at Elon Musk saying, how dare you say that your child is dead when in reality your child is living and flourishing in their new identity and you just refuse to accept that identity, then why call it dead naming? Explain to me that phrase. Because what you are trying to tell the person who is now using that old name is that they've referred to a dead person, someone who is no longer around. And I can't imagine as a father who was accustomed to your child in a certain light, how that could hurt you so immensely to watch your child now take on a different form and a form that is not informed by reality or science. And when he says that there's like a woke mind virus, a lot of people hate to hear that. How dare you insinuate that I'm somehow indoctrinated, that I've been brainwashed to a certain extent, but that is the reality of it. And when we're looking at children, especially who choose to transition, Elon Musk's child, I believe was 18 when they petitioned the court to go ahead and transition themselves. But still, we're in the realm of minordom. We're just stepping into adulthood. So many of these young people end up changing their minds, or they find out that the motivation behind transitioning, yes, may be a little bit of gender dysphoria, but there's so much more going on here. And in the case of this parent-child relationship with Xavier, who's now Vivian and Elon Musk, I can imagine there's a lot more to the large pie that we're dealing with here in this transition, and it's not just gender dysphoria. And we'll get to that in just 
a moment. Now, Elon talks about having been tricked by presumably doctors into signing documents that allow their child to transition. And I can tell you, this does happen. And this is going to be a struggle that we witness in more cases than just Elon Musk's. Parents fighting back and forth over whether or not children should be able to transition, children being taken away from their parents because the child wants to transition and the parents don't want them to, doctors in schools pushing children down a certain path to transition without parental knowledge. So much of this is taking place and it is so often going unheard. So it's very interesting to watch somebody of Elon Musk's status go through this because it really brings light to an issue that's affecting people without such a large platform. And he mentions a very clever trick that is used by medical practitioners, specifically when dealing with transitioning children or gender dysphoric children. They will look at parents and say, do you want a daughter? or do you want a dead son? And in this, what they're really trying to tell parents is you should allow your child to transition or else your child will commit suicide and you will have no child left. If you look into this, however, it's not true. In fact, there's actually a ton of evidence to suggest that pushing children down the path of transitioning doesn't alleviate their suicidal ideation whatsoever. You can look into the cast review to read more about this. And in that cast review, you'll also find that children experiencing gender dysphoria often grow out of this phasal affliction that they experience during a tumultuous period of childhood development. And even with all this research and evidence backing up these claims and the many countries that have decided that children should not be able to transition, Elon Musk is still in the boat that he's in. His child decided to transition in their teens and at 18 petitions the court for a legal name change. And that was actually granted in California, where I'm talking to you now in Santa Monica. Interestingly, in this petition for the legal name change, Elon Musk's son Xavier wrote, quote, I no longer live with or wish to be related to my biological father in any way, shape or form. And I can't help but think this sort of resentment towards Elon Musk may be a guiding factor in the transition itself. I don't know how big of a slice of the pie it is, but I'd venture to guess it's a slice. Another large slice might be that woke mind virus that Elon Musk repeatedly references throughout his interview. When he was asked about his son's transition and his political beliefs, Elon Musk actually attributes the change in political ideology to sending his son to a particular school, Crossroads here in California. He thinks this $50,000 a year school actually contributed to brainwashing his child. And I wouldn't be surprised knowing what goes on in the education system here in the United States. This is a very popular school for celebrities, presumably Jonah Hill's gone there, Kate Hudson, Jack Black, Jack Quaid. So we all know what happens in Hollywood. I can't imagine this school is an exception to being one that is full of leftist indoctrination. But despite all the evidence and very strong theories as to how these ideas may have been imposed on his child, Elon Musk is still being called a transphobe for even having a conversation about what it feels like to lose his son. And I do have to say this, even if Elon Musk was a leftist who was on board with the whole LGBTQ plus agenda, had he had a child that was going to transition, he would still be losing somebody who he felt like he once knew. And I think we should give room for that loss, the grieving, the mourning of the person who you once thought was your child. I imagine many parents would experience that, even if they are accepting of a child's transition. Why is it that through this viewpoint, the child's every feeling, whim, belief has to be completely validated and blindly affirmed, while the parent who is going through an equally valid struggle is to be ignored and even called a transphobe. Just a question, but let's go ahead and read some of these leftist responses to Elon Musk saying that he lost his child. Alejandro says, what a deadbeat father. Reporters have made every excuse under the sun to explain why Elon Musk went to the far right, and it's pretty clear it's because he hates his own trans child. He's a narcissist that views his kid as an extension of himself and views her being trans must mean everyone else is to blame. It's transphobic brain rot that I've seen countless times. Trans kids come out and their dad basically becomes a neo-Nazi. It happened to Jeff Younger in Texas. They can't deal with it and take it out on everyone else. And of course, we pull out the buzzword of neo-Nazi because we must lump that in to make Elon Musk look as evil as possible. We then go on to compare him to Jeff Younger, a father who went through a very similar struggle to what Elon Musk is now describing with a son who was being turned into a daughter. When he sued and tried to stop this whole process from happening, custody was taken away from him. His child, 
now resides in California while he resides in Texas. The Jeff Younger case is in fact a case of child abuse and horrible parenting. But guess what? Jeff Younger has nothing to do with the abuse or the horrible parenting. He's trying to stop that. And still there are more replies. Let's read. Dara says, my son, I lost my son. That's all this is, parents wanting nothing more than to exert their will onto their children forcibly. Mine, 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 my property. I was tricked into killing my property. Not a single thought about the position his daughter was in. You mean his son? And I imagine there's a lot of thought about the position that his son was in. There's a lot of struggling when it comes to gender dysphoria. Elon Musk also states that his son was autistic and he also thought his son to be gay. Two things that he was totally accepting of and understood. Did you know that autistic children experience gender dysphoria and want to transition at a higher rate than virtually any other demographic of child? Why is that? Maybe it's because the autism and other psychiatric comorbidities actually give way to gender dysphoria and thinking that you were born into the wrong body. I just cannot believe that we live in a world where if you are a parent that does not want your child to undergo this horrible process of transition that you will be accused of exerting your will onto the child rather than saving the child from something that is actually life-threatening. Instead of acknowledging that, which is fact, we are told by people on the internet and medical practitioners in the gender clinic that the actual choice is between a dead son and a living daughter. Really think about that. Another leftist response, if this child was shown love and acceptance instead of being ridiculed and treated as though they had something wrong with them, things might be different. The fact that Elon is making the reference to being dead is very telling. That is his own perception and not reality. He still has a child that he could have a relationship with if he chose to do so. Elon has the bigger issue, not Vivian. I'm not sensing any ridicule or mistreatment here. And the reason that Elon Musk refers to his son as dead is because that's what he's told. What else do you guys mean when you say you are dead naming an individual? I too would assume that you mean the prior person that I knew is in fact deceased. And while I do recognize that Elon Musk still has a child who has now taken on the name Vivian that he could have a relationship with, and I urge him to try his best to do so, that does not mean that he has to concede the ground that children should be able to transition, that there are more than two genders, that transgenderism is something that needs to be validated on a wide scale within our society. Let's read more because there are more. There's got thousands of responses. Jenna says, as a trans person who was disowned by my dad, seeing Elon Musk along with fellow deranged transphobe Jordan Peterson dead name and dehumanize his trans daughter Vivian by saying the woke mind virus killed her infuriated me. It shows how much of a POS these freaks are. I don't even know where to start with this. There doesn't seem to be an argument being made here. This seems to be a person who is projecting their own personal experiences out into the world, out onto Elon, out onto Jordan, and I wish them all the best with that. I will say, I don't think you should disown your child under these circumstances, but I don't know that Elon Musk has. In fact, that court petition that was signed by Xavier slash Vivian in 2022 really lets us know that it might be the other way around, that Vivian slash Xavier said, I don't want anything to do with Elon Musk. I hate my dad and I don't want him to have any part in my life. Okay. We'll read one more, just to cross our T's and dot our I's. Marshall says Elon Musk lost his child because he chose transphobia over his own child. The woke mind virus isn't a real thing. The woke mind virus isn't a real thing. As we watch, as young people exponentially start to identify outside of the sex and gender binary. Increasingly, we're watching as kids now say that they're non-binary, gender fluid, gender queer, transgender. How is this all happening all of a sudden? Did we really, for all of history, just have a bunch of trans and non-binary kids running around us who just didn't quite know how to express that? Really? And even if that is the case, how do we account for the 70% of kids that upon going through this phase end up changing their minds and realizing that they are no longer gender dysphoric. How do you account for the social contagion that we're witnessing through things like social media, where kids suddenly become privy to these new identities and decide that they are cool and unique and want to take them on themselves? It spreads and it grows and these ideas swap from child to child to child. And if you actually look at a map of the United States and put hotspots on the areas where children are taking up these identities, you'll find them in places Places like Portland, New York City, Los Angeles, California. It's almost like we have little epidemics happening. Doesn't it almost sound like a virus? A woke 
mind virus? So yeah, guys, there is no doubt that this exists, at least not in my mind. I want to know how you guys feel about it because it seems just so evident as we watch as more stories like these come out. And my heart truly goes out to Elon Musk, who is experiencing this with his child. I can't imagine how hard it is to struggle through the knowledge of this new identity, struggle with your child not wanting to be near you, have a conversation with you, hating you, the ideology that you feel as though was given to them in a school that you sent them to. There are so many layers here that just lead to heartbreak, and I hope that he's dealing with it well. He states he's on a mission now against this woke mind virus, and I wish him all the best on that mission because it's impacting more lives than just his own, than just his son's. As I said at the top of this video, Elon Musk is a busy man. He's got X and Tesla and his missions to Mars, and he in fact believes the woke mind virus is going to get in the way of that. I'll end the video with this quote from Elon. Unless the woke mind virus, which is fundamentally anti-science, anti-merit, and anti-human in general is stopped, civilization will never come multiplanetary. Now, I don't know that we need to be living on Mars. I think I'll stay on this planet, but I don't know how the hell we're gonna get there with all of this other stuff going on. And maybe his trans child was his introduction to realizing the woke mind virus exists, but there's so much more there. This is just one drop in a massive bucket. And he's right, the woke mind virus needs to be stopped. But those are just my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts on this story. Drop them in the comments down below. Also, if you have any personal experience with some of the things we're talking about in today's video, drop that down below if you're comfortable sharing that. If you like this video, like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a video for you guys, which is every day. And I will see you next time. Bye guys. Yeah, you better.